Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Anglican Church on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, before the announcements, I have something important to, uh, to let you know about and ask you to pray about. Um, I was alerted yesterday that our dear friend and brother in the Lord, Pastor Don Hathaway and his wife Sonia, uh, their daughter died suddenly, was found in her apartment. Um, she was in her 20s, and uh, her, their, her name is Anna Lane. So if you would keep uh, Pastor Don and Sonia and their family in your prayers. Uh, she was their baby. And they, have, they also have two sons. So uh, anytime you have a loss like that, it is heartbreaking and uh, heart-wrenching. So if you would, please keep uh, Don and Sonia in your prayers. I wanted to get that into your minds and into your hearts right away. Uh, birthdays. John Tanner is celebrating a birthday today. Uh, welcome back, Johnny. God bless you. Glad that you're feeling better. Uh, it's not easy when you break your back, right? Wow. Ashton Adams is celebrating a birthday this week. Maggie Minchu as well. And Reagan Tanner is celebrating a birthday this week. Next uh, Saturday is a special day in the life of a young man whom we know and love dearly, and that's Hudson Lott. Uh, he's going to be graduating from Coffee High School, and uh, we are very grateful for, uh, for that, and we're very proud of him. Now, Hudson, uh, we, have a, we will have a gift for you and uh, it's, you know, it's the same gift that we give to all the graduates, the beautiful Bible with your name embossed on it, Hudson Jake Lott. That's the same name that you were confirmed by, so I better be right. Uh, anyhow, um, we'll get that to you because I know that you won't be able to be here next Sunday. Uh, and if you are, let me know because uh, we'll, we'll work that out. Uh, Henry Martin, if you would please, you have uh, a word regarding... Memorial Day, and if you would please come up to the lectern. Yes, the mic is on, sir. Hey, good morning. Um, as you might know, um, this year I am the commander of American Legion Post 515. Uh, this month will be my, my last month as a commander. Memorial Day is coming up next Monday, and we need to understand that Memorial Day and Veterans Day are two completely different holidays. Veterans Day is honoring all veterans. Memorial Day is to remember those who have fallen. We remember those who have gone before us. And next Monday at 12 o'clock in front of the courthouse, we're going to have a short Memorial Day service. Uh, it's about 30 minutes from 12 to 12:30. 12 uh, we're, if you don't know, on the on the marble wall or. Um, whatever you want to call it out. It has 87 names on it. Those 87 names are 87 names of Coffee County veterans that have died in previous theaters. World War II, uh, Vietnam, uh, several different uh, theaters. We're going to name each one of those. We're going to say their name and we're going to ring the bell and we're going to have a short ceremony. So just remember next weekend while you're eating your hot dogs, out visiting your friends, graduating. Memorial Day is to remember those that have gone before us. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Commander, appreciate it. Uh, if you would please stand and open your blue hymnals to hymn 230 and let us sing Amazing Grace.
Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, kneeling if you're able, let us pray together the Collect for Purity found on page 124 of your prayer book. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, the world of men. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that taketh away the sin of the world mercy upon us, thou that takest away sins of the world, receive our prayer, thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only art Christ with the Holy Art most high in thy glory, God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, today is Rogation Sunday, and on Rogation Sunday, we pray for those in agriculture and in industry, and uh, so I would like to pray a special collect for Rogation Day, and if you wanted to follow along on it, it's on page 635 in the prayer book. And it uh, begins with Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we humbly pray that your gracious providence may give and preserve to our use the harvests of the land and of the seas, and may prosper all who labor to gather them, that we, who are constantly receiving good things from your hand, may always give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, we thank you that you have provided us some rain in the last few days, but we ask you, Lord, keep it raining. Uh, the crops need that water for life-giving. We thank you in Jesus' name. Now please be seated for the readings. A reading from the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to John. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, 
and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the older order of things has passed away. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is, is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. Of, on no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter in it, nor will anyone, anyone's names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and from the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the, and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve them. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Acts. In Lystra there sat a man crippled in his feet, who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. And, that, and that, at that the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in Lyconian language, that gods have come down to us in human form. Barbarus they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he, had, he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barbarus and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are... We too are only men, human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. In the past he let all nations go their own way. Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. 
Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. The word of the Lord. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told us, the apostles, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey me. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now any youngsters that would like to go to Children's Church, please head to the door and Miss Marilyn will join you there. Please pray with me. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for all the good gifts that you've given to us, especially one another, and the Holy Eucharist, which we will be receiving shortly. Lord, we are very blessed by you, and we give you all thanks, glory, honor, and praise. Lord, Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your holy word, that we would respond as you would have us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 
Amen. Please be seated. Chapter 14 of the Gospel of John is very powerful and it is very important for all of us. Jesus, on the very night that he gave us the gift of his body and blood in the Eucharist, also told the apostles exactly where he and they were going. Without a doubt, Jesus also told them his true identity and offered to all his disciples the wonderful gift of his comfort, helping to take them through their trials. Please remember that the word disciple means follower, and that word still holds true today. There's a great difference, I might add, between an apostle and a disciple, because an apostle can be a disciple, but a disciple cannot be an apostle unless they are hand-picked by Jesus himself. Jesus is also very clear as to who he considers his disciples. He says, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Now, please remember on the that the time that Jesus walked the earth was centered around the male. And so the masculine pronoun is always used, but I believe the feminine is also included. Let me give you some examples. In John 3, 16 to 18, Jesus said, who is included and who's not included? He told Nicodemus, clearly stating the rules for salvation when he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now these words are true and are very important as are verses 17 and 18. The world just loves to stop at the end of verse 16. Now listen to what verse 17 says. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's not so bad. And people will go along for that with that for just a little bit. But it's verse 18 that many absolutely want to avoid. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus clearly states people who are saved in John 14, 23 to 24, when he says, if anyone loves me, let me stop right there for a second. In John 3, 16, okay, to 18, he talks about the world. The world is made up of people, and people are made up of men and women. That's part of my point, okay? So when he speaks of the world, he's incorporating all men and women. And then he's saying, but of those men and women, there are going to be some who don't believe. And those who don't believe, you got the rest of it, okay? If anyone, anyone means anyone. We have a room filled with anyone here. And it's made up of men and women. So if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. And again, the masculine pronoun is because of that day. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, but they belong to the Father who sent me. Once again, the word anyone includes men and women as well. And like John 3, 16 to 18, people listen to John 14, 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. They don't want to hear that no one comes to the Father but through me. It's okay. They're okay with, just like John 3, 16, you know, they're okay with I am the way, the truth, and the life. They want to cut it off there. Jesus clearly sets the ground rules. And how hard it is to understand that believing in Jesus is the key to eternal life in him. 
These are not just statements, folks, but clear promises as when we walk with Jesus, the one true light. Jesus' promises are true. He always keeps them. Jesus promised to come for his people and to answer when we call on him. The counselor that Jesus promised when he said, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. The promised Holy Spirit has come and has taken up residence in each one of our hearts, continually teaching us what God wants and bringing peace to our souls. And we all face many difficulties, both because of sin in our own lives and the incredible evil that surrounds us. We're reminded here that God is just as real and as close to us as Jesus was to those disciples, apostles and disciples, in that upper room almost 2,000 years ago. That much is true, even when we're so rooted in our own problems that we forget to call on Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Our problems, Jesus will take from us when we call on him. Do you remember the three-word prayer? Help me, Jesus. Always followed, it should always be followed with thank you, Jesus. Well, the Holy Spirit comes and has taken up residence in our hearts. You know as well as I do that we face many difficulties. Our faith can be smothered at times by the problems around us. And we lose sight of the fact that a Savior is with us. The Apostle Paul reminds us of the confidence that we can have in one person, Jesus Christ. And he says in Romans 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He goes to the extremes. He's talking about heights and depths, angels and demons. You get the message? Nothing can separate us. We're not supposed to compromise on our faith. Either we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, he is the Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, or we believe that he's something else. Those who believe and stay close to Jesus and refuse to settle for a second best compromised discipleship will find that his peace comes to us as a gift, a peace of a kind that the world can never give. We have the freedom to worship in truth and on the blessings of God's word right here. Jesus said in verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This peace will assure them of Jesus' presence and support, filling them with the knowledge that the Jesus they know and love is truly one with the Father. Now remember, they're in the upper room, and this is just a short period of time before Jesus is arrested and taken from them. He wants to prepare them for what's to come. Even though they truly have no idea from the depth of separation that's about to take place. Jesus told them, you heard me say, I am going away and am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would, glad, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. As closely as they followed Jesus for three years, that they walked with him, I truly believe that they didn't fully get it. They didn't fully understand it, were not really until Jesus arose from the dead on that Sunday morning. 
ascended to the Father in their midst, and then they would really get it and fully understand on the day of Pentecost. By the way, Pentecost is on June 5th. It's coming up June 5th or June 3rd. It's two weeks from today. It's just they re received, fully received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And on the wisdom and, that, and wisdom on that day of Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, we will celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, as I said, just two weeks from today. And I urge you at that time to wear something red. I know I will. It's true that sometimes we need a little help in understanding and strengthening our belief. And that's where the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, comes in. Do you remember just last year, we had lemonade on the lawn, and we had cookies? And we're going to try to do cookies and cupcakes two weeks from today before the service. I'll have more details for you next week so that we can celebrate the fact, the gift of the Holy Spirit together as a community. And we'll do it right outside by the sign before the flagpole, just as we did, and then we'll come in for the service. And I think it's a great thing for us to be able to celebrate our community as followers of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't it true that sometimes we need a little help understanding and strengthening our belief? And that's where the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, comes in. Let me repeat to you what Jesus said in verse 26. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit. Now, a Counselor is someone you go to for help, for guidance. Or in legal terms, a Counselor is your defender. This should make sense. The counselor takes your case, stands before a judge, and says, not guilty. Now let me continue that. From whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Now if we're searching for answers, struggling with our faith, or even wrestling with doubt, we only need to call on the Holy Spirit. Who we received in the sacrament of baptism to help us, to counsel us, to strengthen us, and to walk with Jesus. To keep all these words in perspective, we need to look at the last two verses of chapter 14 that are right after today's Holy Gospel. Jesus said, I will not speak with you much for much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded. Come now, let us leave. That's John 14, 30 to 31. They would now be leaving on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives and walking across the Kidron Valley. Jesus is preparing his apostles and disciples for what is about to unfold and that the prince of this world, Satan, will begin his final assault on the life of Jesus. Let me repeat Jesus' words. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Jesus said that Satan has no hold on him, and as believers of Jesus, we also can rebuke him in our lives, telling him to get lost, to depart from us by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. If he's getting under your skin, folks, tell him, in the name of Jesus Christ, be gone. He has to obey. He has to obey the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. When we give our lives to Jesus, the Savior of the world, we receive the kind of hope that gives us strength for today, empowered to put our daily struggle in his hands. We don't need to be tentative when we know what we have with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, walking with us stride for stride. Jesus encourages us to be walking with him, the one true light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I invite you now to please stand. And if you would, please turn to page 127 so that we may confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. <coughs> we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now kneeling, if you're able, please turn to page 128 so that we may pray together the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, for Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, we lift up our Bishop-elect, Father Alex Farmer, his wife Jody, and their family. Bless them all and give them wisdom and strength. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joseph, our president. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, today we especially pray for Jake, Stone, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, Denzel, Terry, Phil, Tamara, Camden, Denny, Kim, David, Doris, Jackson, Ralph, Suzanne, Ken, Benita, Sherry, Maxie, Judy, Susie, Daya, Troy, Courtney, Eli, Sheila, Janelle, Billy, Zenda, Marty, Ted, Karen, Carrie, Joyce, Jake, Mac, Chris, Tracy, Johnny, Christine, Fisher, Kathy, Gabe, Anita, Ellen, Father John, Bishop Neal, and all who protect our freedoms at home and abroad. I invite you to add your own request at this time. Lord, we are grateful for the healing of family and friends. We stand against the enemy and this virus. Bless and protect our first responders, doctors, nurses, as well as teachers and students. Grant wisdom among all your people that we would be caring for one another in love. 
Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, we especially give thanks for the life of Michelle Arway, grandmother of Andrew. We lift up her husband Richard, son Brent, grandson Andrew, Teresa, Essie, Eliana, and their family for peace and comfort in thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we also lift up Pastor Don and his wife Sonia, the loss of their daughter. We ask you, Lord, to give them comfort and peace at this time, the shocking time, and also for the leaders and people of First Baptist. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, turning to page 130, together let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God by praying, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Oh, go ahead and be with each other. Go ahead. God's peace. It feels good, doesn't it? We dropped the barrier, yes. Well, God bless you. Please be seated. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
now turning to page 132 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and was taken away by the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that we may dwell, he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the union of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Now turning to page 135 in the prayer book, let us pray together as the body of Christ the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Can you please turn to page 137 in the prayer book that we 
may pray together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. I'm going to ask Hudson to come up here for a second, please. I was going to do this earlier, but apparently he had to go next door. Come here, Hudson. Right up here. I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. Ah, don't say, uh oh. It's all good. Father, I just thank you for my brother Hudson. He has been such a blessing to this parish in his service as an acolyte. And uh, we thank you for that service. We thank you for his, his blessing to each one of us. Thank you for the time that we spent in the dugout together at Coffee High. And I just ask you, Lord, to help him in the days ahead post-graduation. Ask this in the name of Jesus, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Congratulations. Now I'm going to ask you to open, stand please, and open your blue hymnal to hymn number eight. And this uh, sort of goes along with this guy who was just up here. Great is thy faithfulness.
Go in peace. The love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks.